Welcome to the BuildFire Workshop, where we learn how to build new features on the BuildFire platform. Today we're going to learn about the BuildFire CMS, what we call the data store. Let's dive right in. So today what we're going to do is start on a project that will give us a series of tutorials of how to use BuildFire and all the different um, SDK features that we have and MBAS features that we have. So um, what we're, we'll do is we'll start with a simple project and make it uh, more and more complex uh, so we can use more, more and more features. So what I thought of today is we'll do a simple task list. Now this is by all means not the best uh, tutorial for a uh, best practices for UI or even coding at that. I'm trying to keep things as simple as possible so we can learn some uh, basic uh, fundamentals. So uh, what we want to do here is just a simple task list where I add one, task two, and task three into the data store so that on the widget side, uh, users can see a predefined list of tasks and then check them off one by one as they complete them. Uh, we can go ahead and delete them. And as you can see, it's immediately in sync. So uh, this is all done by the data store um, feature in BuildFire. We're going to look at the code and how that was done. So what we'll do is we'll start off with the content side uh, on the control side of the plugin. So if you haven't seen uh, how to set up your environment uh, for creating your first plugin in BuildFire, please refer to the other videos. Uh, we go in depth on how to do that. Um, so what we do here is we uh, set up our first plugin. It's just called my plugin. There is the control side. Inside of the control side, there's content, and this is the index.html. Uh, there's a simple meta tag, so to eliminate pinching, um, a reference to the buildfire JS, which you'll always need, and you'll always need in relative path. Some simple styling to make it look a little bit okay and um, a UL element so that we can keep a list of tasks that we create and a little section here uh, that's acting like a form to enter in a new task and then when that button uh, gets clicked uh, we add a task and we're calling a function called add task and here's some script. Again, not the best uh, tutorial for how to do ES6 or, or ES5 or how to best structure your code. This is meant just uh, to keep it simple so everybody can follow along. So initially what we do here is we create a, uh, an object um, with just an array called tasks. So there's an object called taskless and there's an empty array for tasks. This is your initial state, if you will. Um, and then once, once we have that, we create a function called add task. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And so it just takes taskless, its task, and it pushes whatever is in the uh, input box that we placed up here. Uh, so it takes whatever value it is, again, without worrying about validations or things like that. It's just going to take the, the actual value, push it to this array, and then save it. So it calls a save function here, and on the callback of that save function, it adds it to the UI, and we'll go through that in just a second, and it clears out the uh, input control uh, so that that element uh, reinstantiates. So uh, in the save object, all this is doing is calling buildfire.datastore. Now, again, we have this namespace exposed to us because of the framework. So buildfire.datastore. Now, remember, datastore is the database that is dealing with CMS level data. So your, your content management system is meant to save configurations, content, and basically uh, data that you want uh, read and writable on the control side. Again, when you are setting things up and read only on the widget side. So if you're writing a blog, if you have a predefined list that you don't want anybody else to change, if you have a few images that you need to, you need to save, you save it using the data store so that it's immediately available on um, the widget side. It's available offline um, and it has both draft and live mode. So uh, we have another video going in depth on the data store. So reference that if you'd like some more information on the data store. Uh, but let's continue moving on with this uh, tutorial here. So uh, buildfire.datastore.save. I'm saving this list up here uh, and I'm, I'm passing it into 
the tag, and now think of tags in data store like a name of a collection or a name of a table that you have in your, in your database. If you give it nothing, uh, what Buildfire does is it, it defaults it to a uh, quote unquote primary. This is your primary data set. Um, however, it's good practice to always put in a name so that um, if you have multiple data sets that the, you don't accidentally uh, overwrite uh, your own data sets. But uh, another good fundamental piece to understand about all build fires, um, uh, data store, public data and user data is that it automatic, automatically segments out the data based on your plugin and plugin instance. So if you have another instance of tasks, they're not going to override each other. The build fire already knows to segment out that data. Now, once a save occurs, it's going to uh, call back the callback. The callback here is basically handling if there's any error, uh, logs it to the console, otherwise puts it in the UI. So let's take a quick jump there just to see what we did. So add task to list. Um, there's the UI function. This, this is basically in, in lieu of any framework like React or Angular or Vue or anything that you're using. Um, all it does is just builds elements for you. Um, it, if you give it a div, it creates a div for you, an li creates an li, whatever element type you gave it. It appends it to a parent uh, uh, element if you so uh, have one. Uh, it injects an inner HTML if you pass it along anything, uh, and then it gives it class names uh, if so. So this is a really quick hack um, for building a UI. This, this you'll see in a lot of my examples. Uh, when I don't use a framework, it just builds a UI super, super quickly for me. Um, but uh, what we're doing up here is we just create an LI element and we say append it to UL task. So let's go back up here. That's just the, the UL element that we have up here, uh, the unordered list. And then it gives it the task name. Now the task name is what we, we just entered in, right? So that's what, whatever was in the input control. Uh, it adds a delete button to it. So again, it calls the UI function. It says, go create a, a button for me, append it to the LI element I just created. In the inner HTML, put an X and add these classes to it. In this case, uh, Dell button, and this is just uh, for aesthetics and UI and CSS um, styling. Uh, grab that reference to that button. Whenever they click it, Go find the index in the array of whatever element they clicked on, uh, splice the array out so that element in the task, take that single element out, go ahead and save the element again, and then remove it from the UI. It's pretty straightforward. So um, let's go ahead and see that in action. If I come in here and call this task one, add, it gets added in, and you can see it gives a little indicator that that was saved. If I hit in task two, there, task three, and it's there. If I reload, you can see it's instantly there. That piece we haven't gone through just yet. There is a load function of which it calls buildfire.datastore.get. Now we're using get instead of search because it's a single object. You'll see anytime you're saving um, all your data in a single object, you see a lot of gets and saves, where if you have multiple objects, you'll be dealing more with insert, update, and searches. Um, so, but because it's a single object, save will save to the, to the first object it finds. If there isn't any, it'll create one, and get will get you the first object it finds. Again, whenever you're dealing with a single object, you'll see a lot of gets and saves, uh, and this, this uh, is true as well with user data and public data, um, and for data store as well. So a data store, if you're dealing with multiple uh, objects, multiple rows, if you will, in a database, um, you'll do a lot of inserts, updates, and searches. So um, it does a get in this particular table slash collection or what we call tags. Um, if there's an error, it'll log it. Otherwise, it will uh, grab the response, check if there's any existing tasks. Uh, if so, it'll add it to task list. So uh, if it, there's data and there's a task, it'll override it for the task list. Um, it will clear out anything in our existing list. And then uh, if there are new items in that task list, it's going to go ahead and loop through that one by one using a for each because this is an array. And for each element, it'll call what we called here before is adding it to um, uh, creating allies for that unordered list. So 
Um, that's all fine and dandy, but when did load actually get called? It just gets called right at the very bottom here. Um, so just to clean this up a little bit, you have your object, add task, save, load, add, uh, add task to the list, which is basically rendering it. Um, this is a little helper class to create some UI. And right when you load, just go ahead and load uh, the data here. So this is how we're seeing this. Anytime I refresh, you'll see it automatically load here. If I go task four, it gets added in. Uh, now let's take a look at the uh, delete portion that we we added in here again. So when, whenever we uh, were rendering the list, remember the delete button on click, it's going to find the index. Uh, basically, it's again, very simple, just matching up the, the name of the tasks. Uh, if it found anything, it's going to splice the array and resave it. So let's go ahead and give that a test. So it's one, two, three, four. Let's go ahead and delete four. And that's done. Let's reload just in case. And again, just as simple as uh, deleting it and saving it again, and we're done. If we were dealing with multiple objects, you would do the data, data, buildfire.datastore.delete. Now, uh, the next part is once we have all our data set up on tasks here, uh, this again being read and write, and the widget side being read only, we want to load the list of tasks here. And the intention is eventually, um, these are all grayed out until you click them and they turn green being complete, complete, complete. Once it's fully complete, um, you know, you, you finished your task list. The idea is not to manage your task list, but to manage what tasks got completed or not. Um, again, just for the sake of this tutorial. So as you see, I'm uh, deleting three here and it's immediately gone there. Delete, delete. It's immediately gone. Let me add task one back in and you see it immediately comes back. So that synchronization, again, we went over this in a previous video, but let's see how we did that uh, again now. So uh, if I close all these out, close out the control section and go to the widget, we go to widget. Let me just clean this up a little bit. On the widget side, again, uh, this is just good for mobile devices. Um, referencing uh, the script relatively uh, uh, speaking again with a relative path uh, with buildfire js uh, if you go into uh, the style the style just cleans up the ui just slightly uh, there's an h3 tag with the tasks and then the list again so we have a function called load it's being called at the very bottom here let's open that up so it has buildfire.datastore.get the same name of the collection that uh, we used in the control side, it knows that this control is linked to this widget, so it'll pull the same data set. However, if I try to save or insert or update, it will fail on the widget side, saying that you don't have the proper permissions. But uh, when we're, whenever we're doing a read, it comes back just normally. If there's an error, log it. Otherwise, go ahead and render tasks, open up render task in a similar fashion. It's just saying, hey, grab the uh, list that we have on line 36, clear it out. If I have any tasks in, in the array, go ahead and uh, loop through it through a for each and add tasks to list. Let's open that up. This is much simpler since we don't have a delete button, but it's basically saying uh, use the helper class to render a uh, li appended to my list and then insert in the inner HTML the task name. And that's pretty much it. Now, the biggest variable that we saw is right here. In the load function, we've added another piece. Now this could be outside of the load function as well. It's just neater inside here. Buildfire.datastore.onUpdate. So this, think of this as an event that's being triggered anytime an update occurs on this data set. Um, so uh, everything on, in data store, we, we, uh, whenever it changes, we will get uh, this event triggered whether it's an add, update, or a delete. And all I'm doing is saying, go ahead and re-render those tasks, just like we rendered those tasks on the initial load. If there's any update, go ahead and re-render that. And this is really the magical piece, as, as simple as it is, that gets the synchronization done automatically. So if I come in here and add in task two, add, that got triggered immediately. And you can see that task two was added in. If I delete task two, 
you can see it's triggered automatically. So instead of doing a full reload every time and calling the database and, and, and polling the database to see if, if uh, anything has changed, this will get triggered. Um, so this is a very useful piece of code anytime you're dealing with uh, the data store so that you can track uh, and listen into any events, specifically the on update event, so you can re-render uh, or partially render your widget whenever it's done. So the next step that we're going to take a look at is uh, how a logged in user can keep track of what tasks they've um, accomplished and what they haven't. Uh, so we're going to be dealing with the uh, user data database as well as authentication in the next few episodes. So hopefully this helped you better understand uh, an implementation of the data store and uh, take a look at the next episodes for user authentication as well as user data. Thank you. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to keep up to date with our latest content. If you do so, you'll also be entered into a raffle where you can win some Buildfire merchandise. Thanks for watching.